Very cool. Thanks for hanging with me and thanks for putting that in the chat so I didn't just gab away like a fool for an hour here. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. That was a little sound check practice for whoever was here for the last five, ten minutes or so. Um, I'm going to talk about my approach to harmony, which is, in my mind, a nice way of saying music theory, which is an intimidating world of numbers. And what I want to do here is show you what I've been experimenting with for over five years to hear these relationships in, you know, to feel these relationships, to really understand what a major third or a flat sixth, what that sounds like, why that is so cool, why that is so worth spending a lot of time uh, studying and in some ways almost meditating over to get those relationships sorted out in a, in a deeper way. And so one thing about my method here is that I do all of my uh, study in the key center of C because by doing that for a really long time, I'm able to um, like really create a memory for myself, a map of every possible uh, relationship between the notes relative to C. Now, any good music teacher is going to tell you to practice every idea in all 12 keys so that you don't become, you know, a musician that can only play in one key because that's not necessarily anyone's goal here. But this approach is really for understanding harmony using a piano keyboard. So you will get much better at piano and you will be able to play some really beautiful things with the piano from just understanding these, uh, these things a little better. But the point is more about the fact that you'll know the relative harmony in one key center very deeply. And then with that, you can transpose it all over the place for, for your use. But you'll have a deeper feeling for the relationships versus, okay, here's a lick. It's uh, one, two, minor, third. Now let's run that through all the keys. And it, in itself... It's a cool idea, but instead of going wide, we're going to go deep on the key center of C. Awesome. Thanks so much for, uh, for being here and, and popping into the chat. And I will absolutely answer all questions. I have this whiteboard uh, app open here that I can put some notes and slow down if I go too fast or if I say something that doesn't make sense, just holler in the chat and we will um, make sense of out, out of all of this. Because this is a practice. I'm going to do a more formal video of these concepts for YouTube, but I really have to work out, you know, the rap to it. So, um, all right. Key center of C. Let's think about stuff. Here's the intervals. I'm going to skip an octave because I believe that it sounds, it's easier to hear these relationships when you give yourself all this space, one octave of space. So here, here we have a, a C. Here's another C. We call that an octave. We add numbers to each note in that scale, and I'm gonna be referring to those constantly to shorthand here, so I'm not necessarily gonna always use the letter names. So let's identify those. If C is one, then D is two, E is three, F is four, five, six, seven, eight equals octave. Okay, so eight is an octave. And so we're not really going to talk about eighths very much because it's C to C. But we might later get into ninths because in jazz harmony, that's a, there's uh, chords based on thirds that stack all the way up to thirteenths. 
sometimes beyond, but that would be a common thing to add, thir- you know. This would be 9, 11, 13 over 1, okay? So we're going to get there the long, you know, the long way, but that was just kind of taking the numbering out as far as it goes. But really, if you just understand 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're rocking, okay? So this would be the first interval. These are little chords I'm making here. This is harmony. When you add two notes together, you get harmony. One note, melody. That's not a harmony to anything. That's just one note. That's harmony. So when you start adding more notes, it starts getting really interesting. In my mind, there's a feeling associated with each interval. And it's not necessarily a specific feeling. And I know everyone's going to have their own because it's totally subjective. But it's a map. So I'll let you know what my feelings are for each one and maybe you um, can remember it that way or maybe it gives you a something you can you can remember instead but the most common interval in western music classical music all the way through you know pop whatever is a third and chords are made in thirds Often, they can be made out of any any group of notes. But in this case, we've got a one, and then the note in the scale here we're playing is the third one. So this is a third. That's the name of the relationship there. And just to extrapolate from that, this would be a fifth, because that's the fifth note. And fifths are very common intervals to hear in every kind of music, Western music. It's the basis of uh, a lot of, like, rock music is, is just one in fives, the power chord. Okay, that's a fifth. So this would be the sixth. seventh and a big wide octave double octave there so if you listen on a well-tuned piano and this is a, a vst piano a software piano so it should really be in tune um that's going to sound very correct you're going to be able to hear the the uh, the wavelength almost at if you just close your eyes and listen for a second. Now, when I play a third, for instance, we get a much more complicated series of harmonic overtones. What that means is each one of these notes. What makes it sound so rich is it's a C and then it has another C above it and another C above it, another C above it, and they get slightly quieter all the way up the harmonic series. Plus some other frequencies mixed in and it gives you this nice rich vibration. So the third you can hear has got a lot more complicated stuff going on. And I love the third. So let's walk these, this third relationship up the scale because we're still going to be relative to our C note, but we're going to go out on a, little, on a little walk here and hear what's available to us if we make thirds out of the scale that we've got here of the white keys, C major scale. Let's make some thirds.
And what's interesting to me is that, you know, the, the C major scale has got to be the most boring thing that there is musically. Once you've learned it, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, is it just really plain and really basic and really, I mean, only that that's where everybody starts. Um, but as soon as you, from that same uh, scale, create uh, a chord you know, a chord using just the, th the thirds stretched up one octave so that you can really hear the, the, the sound of it. It gets much more interesting and it's musical all of a sudden. And, and you could just play that scale. I can play this scale um, and kind of entertain myself while I hear it and practice the fingering um, to walk up the, the scale simultaneously. So play as slow as you need to. Slow is like the magic ingredient to learning this the best way and and work your way up the scale with this octave plus a third chord here and i could practice that for a really long time without getting crazy but I, but just this is so boring that the first t time up and down i already feel like uh it's not musical to me but you know add the third up an octave and So it, it, it turns into a musical practice, which is the goal. So don't sit around practicing scales. Just don't do it. Turn them into music, and you'll get the why you would use those notes concepts on a deeper level than you would necessarily, you know, how. Okay, here's how but I can't really get much further than do, re, mi with that. But if I turn it into... Just use rhythm and whatever you can do with your hands to entertain yourself, you know, musically while you're practicing through this stuff. And it'll just, it'll go in even deeper. Okay, and it's really incredible because, and like I, I said, and maybe in the uh, sound check, um, but I want to repeat, like I've been doing this, I think, for six years almost. Like I just decided I'm going to totally go in extra deep on the key center of C and learn everything, major, minor, every type of scale, everything related to just C as a center place. And then from there... If I could go really deep with that, especially as a producer using uh, like Ableton uh, to 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 write, you you could use your skills based in in you know the key center that you know so deeply and transpose like crazy. So it's not a limitation for the um, kind of the intellectual side. It can become a limitation for your piano playing. So I do urge you if you're uh, trying to be a, a good keyboard player to um, do this stuff for part of your practice and then spend the rest of your time working through all the keys. But that going deep on C, deep in the C, is what you're going to, you know, do when you're, when you're thinking about this stuff, and it's going to go much deeper for you. So, okay, so that was thirds. And as you notice, I was able to throw in any notes from this C major scale over the C bass and it, and it was good I mean quote unquote good everything is subjective here so I'm you know taste there's no Frank Zappa said there's no accounting for taste so I won't account for taste but I'll tell you what I figured out here in terms of sounds and try to describe them in a fun way that we can all relate to so anything works uh, white keys over C
And by shooting for musical ideas, phrasing, you know, rhythm, you'll entertain yourself enough to really just drive this stuff home. You'll play, I, I hope you can, like me, play for hours on this once you get kind of excited about what's possible because we're going to, this is like ground floor and I'm going to go up a level here in a second. Okay, so two note chords. Great way to hear the third. Well, what does a fourth sound like? It's a little less common, maybe, the fourth. It's a popular um, interval in jazz. We're going to try fifths next, just to hear that. Okay, so that sounds, in my mind, more um, harmonious or consonant, or those notes fit together in a cleaner way than that creates more, I can hear the extra vibrations that's creating versus the, that sounds resolved. That sounds tense a little bit. That sounds home. Fifths, very stable interval, fifths. So you can do the same little trick and go up in fifths. Ooh, that's an interesting one. By the nature of, of what happens in the, you know, the C major scale, chords that are built off of this B as a bass note have a tense sounding fifth. It's different than this one. That's called the tritone. What we've just discovered is the furthest you could get from your root, the tritone. And that is an interval that was once illegal. So if you're a composer in the classical times, um, you could go to jail for trying to perform music with tritones in it. It was called the devil's interval. <laughs> and in C major, the tritone would be this F sharp. G flat, actually. We're going to call it the correct name. So G flat, because what it is, is it's the fifth down one half step. We call that flat, flat tire. So there's the, there is the perfect fifth. <laughs> yes, that's good. In the uh, comments here, it's the Simpsons theme. It's this, yeah, the third note. Mm -hmm. And it's full of mystery because it is the devil's interval. You know, it's the Black Sabbath. You know, Halloween interval. But it can be used in so many interesting ways. It's not always going to be this loud, doomy thing. And it can be used um, as a way of creating some tension that will resolve nicely to the somewhere so it's a great interval but what it is is a flat fifth <laughs> and it's tense okay so perfect fifth flat fifth major third minor third major third, minor third. So they, they call that happy sad. That's kind of the foundation. If you add a fifth in there, and then you, uh, let's make a chord here uh, that's just C, E, G. One, three, five, major, happy. If I take the third down one half step, flatten it, flat tire, then we got 
C minor, and really, mm, it you know you could you could see why everyone calls this one sad and this one happy, and that is a really overly generic, simple way of of thinking of it. But that's kind of where we're at. We're at like level one right now, and we'll get to some more levels of subtlety. And mixing and matching majors and minors and they're all just colors you know it's like tone colors and when you start getting into that aspect of it then you can do some really interesting stuff stuff with with just these I'm still thinking in this everything's related to C but I'm starting to use some of the other notes outside the scale and getting still in my mind totally related to C major so you can really get there every anywhere from this center place but, but by using it as kind of like an anchor I feel like I can understand the sound of a minor third better just by having done this for ages now um than if I had just gone, okay, minor third in every key. You know, for me, I separate my, it doesn't go as deep the way I learn. So that's why I, I think this is a cool uh, methodology for, for deepening your, your understanding of harmony. But let's keep going. Um, so here is... the scale up in thirds. If I add a fifth to the third now we've got a three note chord it's called a triad that's a major triad so that's C major like if you see a, a chord uh, in a chord book that just says C that's it C E G but we now know that's one three and five in the major scale. One, three, and five. That's a C chord. So let's take those up the uh, the C scale, um, and we'll use each scale note as the new bass, temporary bass note to hear it. So there's C, there's D minor. Because of the way that the scale works out, the second chord, if you make a chord off the second note of the scale, you get a minor, D minor. The third note of the scale, if you make a triad off of that note, you get a minor chord as well. Hear how it's the sad? So we could raise the third of this, from what we know already, we could raise that third of this minor chord and we should get a major chord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, E major. So that's why you, you might end up using this A flat or G sharp note somewhere in your C major thinking here. Because that might be, you know, these are all close enough. A half step is just the neighbor tone. And harmony and melody really enjoys close relationships whenever possible. Um, what's up with F? So that's the fourth note of the scale. Hey, what's up, buddy? That's the fourth note of the scale. And I'm making a triad off of that chord. And it's a major triad. C major. Or excuse me, F major. F major. We go up one more note in the scale. And my bass note becomes G. And my chord is G major so this is I'll let you guess in your mind 
what's the sound of the chord that's made off of A in the key of C major, and that would be an A minor. If I want to raise the third, I can get the A major sound. <laughs> I remember um, in high school, I had this really crazy, cool music teacher. Um, man, I don't remember his name, but we called him the doctor. And he was this older guy, and I think he was one of the band leaders. And he... Um, we made up this song to remember the sound of major and minor thirds. And it was like one, three, major third, one, three, minor third, one, three, major third. That's what I said. That's what you heard. And I just memorized that my whole life for being able to hear. <laughs> it just sticks so we do whatever games and little memory tricks you need to get this stuff started and you build off of it and it's and it really gets fun so anyway a minor that was the sixth note of the key center of c and if we build a chord using just the major scale notes here we get a minor now b was the really interesting one because it has that tritone, that flattened fifth, that the the scary interval in there, and and a minor third. That's right. So that's what's called a diminished chord. And there's one built in, which is really nice, to the C major scale. There's a diminished chord, and diminished chords are super interesting. Um, they're tense. They really want to resolve somewhere. Uh, in this case, you can just resolve a half step up to C major. It's quite uh, classically uh, satisfying resolution there. So we would go B diminished, C major. It's like the end of a symphony or something like that. I mean, they just be smashing that thing. Um, so remember that diminished chord, because when we start to get into seventh chords, which are four note chords, that we call seventh chords because they include the seventh. Then we'll see that diminished chords get really interesting. So we'll get there. Oops. But it's mostly about feeling and hearing that sound you'll know when it's time to use something like that and it'll be clear and you won't need to be like oh i need a diminished chord you'll just know the colors available here and that tension available from that chord is strong um okay so those were chords triads built on every note of the c major scale <laughs> Okay, let's do seventh chords. Why not? We just talked about it. So if I were to play a four note chord based off of each scale tone in the C major scale going on up the thing, I also get this uh, series of major and minor and one diminished chord. Um, they get more uh, interesting because there's more harmony going on. So, and interesting is a word I say in quotes, but you know, this is a denser thing 
than this. Because your ear then goes to that. Yeah. My, I lost my voice somehow. My voice this morning, so I won't even try singing. But that's why I have a piano. All right. So love seventh chords. I'm going to skip the root, put it down one octave so we can really hear the third, fifth, and seventh of each chord here. And we're going to go on up the scale. C major seven. Next one is D minor seven. I mean, and take the time to make some music with this, you know, while you're doing it so that you, 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 it's not just an exercise for your fingers and it's not just for your brain, but it's, you know, that you're feeling it and it'll sink in deeper. Third chord, E minor seven. F major seven. Kind of a dreamy sounding chord, major seven. This is called G dominant seven. It has a flat seventh in it. If it had a major seven, it would sound like this. But in this case, it has a flat seven. It makes it very strong and bold, and it's kind of wants some release back down to that C major again. All right, a chord built off of the A is a minor seventh chord. Try to make each each thing a little musical for yourself. All right, now here we go. This is the chord built off the B. We know it's some kind of diminished thing, but we're now adding a seventh to it. Ooh, it's called a half diminished seven because it actually has. This would be the fully diminished seven. All minor thirds stacked on top of each other. So it's called a half diminished seven just to make things confusing and they have lots of names for stuff, but that's quite a sound, the half diminished seven. It's really tense, and it can be used in really cool ways uh, when we get further along into minor key harmony. C major 7 again. We're back at the top. And the C major 7 it very much sounds like home, plate, major, happy. It just extends that major feeling up. And if we go back and forth between C major and F major, it's a really you know, satisfying chord progression within the C major scale territory. Everything I was playing was on the white keys here, which is still all C diatonic major stuff. But when you get into playing some seventh chords, or in this case, a ninth chord, so you can make some interesting chord progressions out of the C major scale that don't just sound like do, re, mi, um, you can go up one whole step to D minor. And go back down to C major 7. Which is a nice... And 
nice little chord progression. You go up to that F major seven. Excuse me. Maybe on up to the A minor seven. Ooh. That's interesting, because when I played the E and I added the ninth, uh, it didn't sound so nice to me uh, there, because this minor, really minor chord needs... Um, A sharp nine sounds better. We're stretching this harmony out real wide over all, all of these chords. And can you hear that this note is really tense on that chord? But that's almost dreamy again in the same category as, as these things. So... I'm just doing that to illustrate that once you start to stack up thirds and really add complexity, add this stuff together, you can start to work your way, you know, through your ear and your your the way it feels into new territory for yourself. Oh, what is that? You know, and on the E, the sharp nine. Now I want those or excuse me that would be okay so here i'm teach i'm like kind of figuring this out on the fly here so what that is is it's not a sharp nine it's a regular nine that sounded good but the diatonic note the note that made sense relative to c on my you know white keys theory here was going to end up being this really sour note this f which would have been a flat nine. That's the flat nine. And the flat nine isn't working for my ear in this chord that I was trying to play. Okay. And so it's like a map for you to figure out what you're working with for your own use and not just some memorizing, oh, you know, what to, how to call things, but to understand how you built them and what you wanted them to sound like. Um... So here I have a D in the bass. We're still using the C major scale, and we will be kind of for everything. But when I play any of those notes over this D in the bass, we get some interesting stuff, including chords. And that's some jazzy territory that you might recognize from... Davis kind of blue album Bill Evans piano and Bill Evans liked to make his chords in fourths So I'm just putting a D in the bass, and I'm playing chords kind of at random with my eyes closed, with my fingers spaced at the shape of a fourth, right? These are the fourth note up, and I'm still using the C major scale, all white keys. So then you can really listen, close your eyes, and just pick some, some chords like that, and... Just moving that shape up and down. In the bass line here, the A is the fifth 
of D. So they make nice partners, because remember, fifths are they're called perfect intervals. So it makes for a nice little rhythm section I can do with my left hand to accompany my chords here. So that's just improvising over the note of D using this stuff. Um, and that's a really cool one. It's called, it has a name, Dorian Mode. And um, D-O-R-I-A-N, Dorian Mode. And modes are um, scales and chords made from the varying degrees of the diatonic major scale. And that's what we're doing here. We're just sitting here playing modes, but now we have a name for it. So like when I play everything using the tools from the key of C major, but when I play in D, that's called modal playing, and it is D Dorian, if you want to be hip. Maybe that's familiar. As a sound, that's D Dorian. But really, it's Dorian. So like, you know, when you get to know that that's the, the Dorian sound, then later down the road, it's easier to transpose. You can play, you know, in other keys and know with that Dorian sound. But we're going deep. You can really entertain yourself by just playing a D in the left hand. And then, yeah, McCoy. I mean, everybody everybody plays the Dorian thing. I mean, it's a nice. Uh, um, there's a lot of tunes written in Dorian. Uh, Stuff based on E is a tensor because built into the E, the second note, the second note, if you're starting on E here, is a flat two. And we remember that's like a sour note. That's like as tense as you can get in terms of closeness. And like the... Uh, Tritone is the furthest you can get. So you'd have to go this many steps to get there. These relationships, flat two is what we're calling those. That's as close as you can get. And that's very tense. You know, it's almost comically so. Um, but that can be used like crazy for tension. And if you listen to a piano player like Thelonious Monk, which I'm not gonna even gonna try and attempt to, to monk, you know, here, but um, like, like, yeah, he's all about those. Monk stuff, you know, really tense, using all the tensest possible notes, boldly. Um, You know, it's a, it's a thing. So that's a flat second. And that's built into this E scale. So it's almost got that. You know, villainous kind of tension to it um or uh i went up to the f major seven if you play all the 
thirds up from there. And those two chords are nice uh, combination. So you can make a, 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 a cool chord progression just going from E minor. And when you play scale stuff over that, and then go up to that F major, it resolves and sounds really uh, kind of open and, and home and then and away. Go on up to uh, the G. Remember, it's called the dominant seven or seventh chord, D G seven, because its seventh note is a flatted note. So the scale. That happens off of the G has this nice you know, flat seven thing. Fire on the Mountain by Grateful Dead. So we're playing the stuff G, which has a flat seven in it, and then its flat seven is this F. We put a chord on there, and it's this major, major seven. You know, it really works together. That works great. And clearly, I mean, that tune is a tune that a lot of people in, are familiar with, or like, you know. Um, so that's all in there. That's all in this C major diatonic world. Uh, let's move on up to this A minor. Really useful, super handy stuff here. But, uh, let's mix it up with uh, the C major. So C major has the same notes. Obviously, a lot of these chords share the same notes, but when you start noticing that is when you can tie them together in cool ways and you start what's called voice leading and that's having your chords have one note that goes in a real cool way to the other of the next note in the next chord um so that a minor has got a lot of the same notes as the c major and they make for a a decent uh chord progression and i mean old school like So that's all diatonic chords. Everything was in our C diatonic major rule book here. And I was just making triad chords based on C and then on A, which is our sixth note of the scale. So one, six, or so this would be one, six, two, five. sounds real inside um which is meaning that you know all those chords fit into that nice major seven rule book there and we didn't add any uh you know uh uh notes to to shade that or color that or give it some further dimension so we end up getting that kind of two-dimensional <laughs> sound so one way of doing that is just opening up into bigger chords seventh chords um, you know that's still uh predictable and kind of got that major kind of corny sound to it but it's a richer harmony because we've added the seventh on top of it right so if you 
use some more tense chord tones with that. Like, you can go from real corny to kind of mysterious with a, just a little bit of uh, borrowing outside of the major scale. Um, and that's what's interesting to me. And that's why playing in C major for six years <laughs> is, um, you know, a, like a gold mine of understanding and is worth your time. Um, if you have it, um, because if I were to now go, okay, jam that into all 12 keys, I would immediately lose my kind of emotional connection to this concept that I'm, you know, really feeling right now in here and go into a more memorization kind of thing, which I can't then apply in that way. Um, so it's more interesting for me to stay in the same place because then I can go, oh man, that sounds crazy cool to come back to the C from that place. Oh, see, I really like that. And that is like coming from a flat six major seven type thing to a, a one major seven. And I love those type of chord progressions. I mean, that takes me into a place where it's beyond the obvious of, you know, beyond the mundane into the special for me. Um, and everybody's use will vary and your taste obviously is going to vary. And so I'll stop saying that over and over, but there's no accounting for taste. But to my ear, that's interesting stuff. And let's keep pushing. Cool. I'm going to go for like probably another 20 minutes or so. And I really appreciate everybody hanging out. And I will archive this on my YouTube and then um, work on a much more formalized version with, you know, kind of visual aids and a, a more uh, streamlined lesson where I'm a little less rambling. But I, I kind of wanted to really stretch um, on the explanation of this. Uh, and I hope it's, 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 clicking clicking for you um it takes a lot of use though just to hear it done is one thing but if you get a chance to sit down at a piano or midi keyboard or something you know headphones get in there as close as you can by yourself and take your time to work through those scale of thirds and just hear it I mean, sometimes I just wake up in the morning, sit at the piano, and just close my eyes and go. Add a little embellishment to it. It's still the same thing. I'm just kind of goofing around with it. taking the same ideas and just making them musical, you know, and that will take the theory and it'll just go down deeper for you. And then it's not theory and it's not this technical stuff. It's like you're cooking and you got spices in the cabinet and you know what you need, you know, and it's that, or you're painting and you've got all the colors available, all the kind of, strengths and and you know weaknesses available of the colors to use to create dimension and stuff like that so that's how i see it any 
anything goes, I mean, you can go into all notes that do not belong in the C major scale and somehow, oops, <laughs> that was the worst example. Tension and release. Um, so you can get out of this. It's not a cage, this C center, uh, key center thing at all. It's really liberating because, like, for instance, let's finish with talking about one of my favorite intervals, which is super helpful uh, in making things go from mundane to special. It's the minor sixth. Sixths in general are super sweet. So that's a C. The sixth of C is A. So there's our sixth. Minor sixth is flattening that. If you add that minor sixth to the major scale, you get all of, it's like a key that will unlock a multitude of musical doors. I will demonstrate that for you right now uh this stuff comes from the mind of a man named barry harris who is like jazz yoda he's like 98 or 100 years old and he lives in new york city and still teaches he was my teacher's teacher and my teacher is Youssef latif rest in peace he was a beautiful uh musician saxophone flute player played with everybody um, his heyday was in the 60s and 70s. But I studied with him in the 90s. And he kept referring to his teacher all the time. My teacher, this, you know, my teacher would say, you add that, you know. And I'm, I'm doing his cool voice. Uh, hopefully I'm not doing this terribly, but... Um, and I'd always wonder, like, who is he talking about? And it was Barry Harris, who there's some videos you can go watch. And he, he's super intense. But his whole thing, I mean, there's a lot to it. But a lot of it hinges on this minor sixth. So here's the scale. If you add that minor sixth in there, it gives you an eight note scale, so it's rhythmically a little more useful. You can get eights and fours and stuff instead of always having a three and a four. Um, on its own, it's maybe not that exciting. You're like, well, that's not the, I don't see what's the big deal. So let's make thirds. We'll just go up in thirds and see if we can hear what that does. <laughs> so there are a couple more really cool little exchanges in there that to my ear um, got, got excited hearing so let me know if you're hearing that here's where let's play the, the original major just the major scale in thirds now here is a little slower here we go that is a new chord that we get that's not as useful because that's just one whole step that one is super nice because that goes. There's some really cool major minor kind of inner relationships there that you can get at by adding that minor sixth to the major scale or the minor scale. You get C minor scale by flattening the third and sometimes the seventh. And in this case, the sixth. You get stuff like this. Flat. 
two. There's that tritone, the devil's interval. But it sounds like Harry Potter when you get it in there correctly. Or whatever, you know, it's got that mystery. Yeah, Radiohead, big time, man. That's all this stuff has got all that. So like... This theory is definitely you can get, you could hear Tom York working some of this out. just slightly extrapolated from the C major scale over the course of six years <laughs> sitting in my piano every morning. But um, I really feel like that's something that can be um, ex- uh, utilized by all musicians. Um, and I really want to try to uh, keep keep working on uh, uh, sharing this more um and and you know there's this was just the scratching the surface um so i'm gonna archive this on my youtube and i'm gonna um uh put the uh the link on my socials and stuff and then i'll probably do another lesson on this um and if you have any questions feel free to write me or drop them in right now. If you have any questions right now, I'm more than happy to answer a couple questions. Um, But really, I think that the starting place for your own 
kind of practice with this is just to start with your left hand on a C and your right hand on that third and start moving them around together <laughs> until you start uh, until it sparks some fire and maybe this will just launch a, a brand new song and you'll you'll forget the lesson in but that's what's up you know that's that's the point so um thanks so much for hanging and uh yeah rugrats the right on um we'll uh we'll, we'll do this again peace thank you <laughs>